So first things first is the depth of your zig. Out in front of us today, we've got about six or seven feet of water. And I don't just want to put all three zigs on the same depth or fish with one on a zig and two on the bottom. So I've gone all three, all out on the zigs. As I said, six foot of water, I've got one on a two, one on a four, and one on a five. I know six foot isn't really that deep, but at this time of year, certainly the fish can be swimming through. And you know, if you're at the wrong depth, you're not going to catch a carp. So it always pays to chop and change your depths. And again, going back to that, putting maybe one on a zig and two on the bottom, I get a lot of people say, you know, how many do you go with on zigs? And it's always all three. You wouldn't turn up at a lake and put, you know, you'd want to put three on the bottom. You wouldn't want to just put one on the bottom and maybe try something else. If you're going to go for it, you've got to, you've got to really go for it. You know, you're not going to get a gauge of anything if you just put one on a zig. So I always go all three on the zigs. And that's, that's with anywhere I go, really. If it's not happening on the bottom, you know, you look around the lake, it's not very busy here today, but if it was in the summer and there was 30 anglers on here, 30 anglers with 30 with, with three rods each, you're looking at 90 rods. There's a big stock of fish in here, and if no one's catching on the bottom, then the fish certainly aren't on the bottom. So by changing your zigs, different depths, and I'll probably leave them about an hour, go up and down sort of maybe a foot, two foot on each zig until you find that perfect depth. And once you've found the depth, bring all three in, put them all on that depth, and you normally you find that your bites kick off from there. So that's probably, I would say is the most important thing is getting the right depth of where the fish are. Today's tip's all about preparation. You don't want to be sat on the bank when you can be fishing, messing about time rigs, you know, you're not looking at the water, you've got nothing ready, you know, you want it all prepared. So I have it just in a nice little bag here, in my box. I've got all my different colour foams, all my different colour zigger liners. So if I need to chop and change colours, I can. Um, in there as well, I've got spools of line. I've got a couple of spare spools as well, just in case I run out, save having to run back down to the tackle shop. And also, as a lot of you will have seen, the zig disc. I can sit at home one evening, I can tie up 15, 20 zigs, wrap them up around my me, around me zig disc, and if I am fishing, and if I've cut a zig down too short and I need to change, rather than tying a new one, I can go to my disc, unravel one, and I've got a new zig to go with. So, preparation. Nice and easy, but it saves you loads of time on the bank. As well as just fishing zigs on their own as well, also like spotting over them. It's become so popular now, especially on places like Linear, you know, you see people turn up, spot over zigs, and it's an absolutely fantastic way of catching, and not just catching a few, but catching a real amount of fish. You know, you can build up a big weight or a big bag of fish real quickly. The mix I use, couldn't be any simpler really. Hemp, small pellets, and just a basic, like a powdered sort of nutty stuff that just clouds up the water. You're not looking for food content. All you're looking for is to create a cloud and create an area in your swim that you can get a lot of carp in at once, competing and inside of that's going to be your zig hook bait. Coming in towards the evening, I'll probably put maybe a, a few boilers in there, a good few kilos of boilers, just so you can get some bits down on the bottom for, for night time, a few grains of sweet corn, so that you're getting a bit of bait down there as well. So that's just when it comes to the night, take your zigs off, put your bottom baits on, and you know you're fishing over a bit of bait. So that's the mix, nice and sloppy. Give that a few spots, don't ever go crazy with it. You want to start off with about five or six, and uh, as you can see that the cloud lingers for ages and you want to put two or three out probably every 20 minutes or so and if you find you're not getting bites sometimes increasing the amount but maybe standing there and putting 10 or 15 out and creating a real disturbance can get the fish in and uh, yeah that's it spotting over zigs. Another key aspect to zig rig fishing is fishing with a tight line you know I see loads and loads of people they chuck out peel a bit of line off have a nice little drop on their bobbin it might look good but for bite indication, it is absolutely pants. When I'm fishing with my zigs, I want the tightest possible line, almost so you can pretty much play a tune on them. To achieve that, big leads. You know, if I'm fishing like I am today, there's a few snags out in front of me, I'm fishing with a drop off anyway, you've got a nice big lead. I mean, I'm using a four and a half ounce lead. When the fish picks up the bait, that's setting the hook, the lead's coming off the clip, the fish is hitting the surface, and you're into the fish. And also your indication, you know, what, what's going on that end? You want to know as best as you possibly can what's going on this end. To achieve that, I'm using the Black Label Springer Arms. These are absolutely fantastic. They're not designed for slack line fishing. You know, they're solely a tight line fishing method. Um, and what they are, they're a fiberglass arm. So when you're clipping them on your main line, they're always trying to pull themselves down to straighten back out. So they're always holding your main line under as much tension as possible, taking all the slack out. So you've got no slack between your lead and your bobbin. And with zigs as well, you're not getting 
full on ripping takes. All you're getting sometimes is just a few little bleeps, you know. And if you're there and your, your line's sort of like you've let a bit of slack line off and you're sort of looking at it thinking, oh, it could have been the wind, it could be a bite. You know, with these, there's no false indication. You know, I know if I'm spotting over zigs, I don't need to pay any attention to my buzzers. I'll have my receiver in my pocket, buzzers on low, maximum sensitivity, and all you'll hear is you'll get one bleep, look down nine times out of 10, the bobbin's just dropping back and you know you've got a bite. That is the perfect, in my opinion, the perfect dig rig fishing uh, line setup. As well as changing the depths of the zigs, also changing the colour of your hook bait. You know, this is equally as important as, as moving your rigs up and down in the layers. Always carry a selection, zig aligners come in six different colours, you do six different colour aligners, six different colour foams, and that gives me so many different variants to use, chop and change. You know, if I'm, if I'm spotting over zigs and I've got a bit of sweet corn in the mix, I can put a yellow one on. If I've got maggots in the mix, I can put a red one on and so forth. As well, carrying black. Bright days like this, black silhouettes really well against the light. Um, at night as well, you know, black foam. I, no one knows why it works, I don't know why it works, it just does. So by carrying a large selection of different colours, I can quickly change over and hopefully put a few fish on the bank. If you'd like to watch more videos from Fox Fishing TV, then click the link here. Or if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then click the link here.